Hi, in this free drum lesson, we're going to take a look at the first drum solo that occurs in the song No One Knows by Queens of the Stone Age, featuring the bombastic powerhouse Dave Grohl on drums. And the entire drum solo, in fact the entire song, is written in triplets. So we'll be dealing with um, bars of music that contain four beats, and each beat of the bar is being split up into eighth note triplets. And all that means is that if you've got four beats in the bar, as we do here, each beat is subdivided into three more notes or, or triplet beats, eighth note triplet beats if you like. So beats one, two, three and four and each of these four beats has three triplet notes in it. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplets. So um, as I go through this solo you'll be hearing me talk about triplets. Don't get confused um, between eighth note triplets and sixteenth note triplets. All you really have to understand is that if you're feeling the pulse, one, two, three, four, we're subdividing that pulse up into three triplet notes per beat. Okay, so I'm also then going to take the solo and break it up into four sections because there's really just four sections to learn. Um, so let's take a look at the first section now. Okay, so um, the first line of the chorus drum solo, um, it's best to think of it as um, six notes to start off with. So we're looking at the first bar and we're looking at the first six notes, the first two beats of the bar, the first six eighth note triplets. And the first beat, we just have the first and the third note of the triplet played on the high tom with the right hand. And in the second beat of the bar, we have three eighth note triplets all played on the snare drum. So without the bass drum to start off with underneath, the right hand is playing for the first beat one triplet or one, two, three, however you want to really count, it doesn't really matter, one triplet, and then beat two is two triplets, left, right, left. So when you put those two together, you see why it's left, right, left for the three notes, because it loops into it. We get one triplet, two triplets, one triplet, two triplets, one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. So if your pulse is one, two, three, four, one triplet, two triplet, uh, da, 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 da. And we've actually got some bass drum notes being played all the way through um, both bars of this first section, uh, being played on beats one, two, three, and four of the bar. So when we put the bass drum notes in, we get the first bass drum falling with the first high tom note, one triplet, and then the second bass drum in this bar occurring with the first snare drum note, which happens to fall with the left hand. One triplet, two triplets, one triplet, two triplets. Bass, 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 bass. So if we just take that bit and loop it, so if you're going one, two, three, four. I use my correct bass drum foot for this, the right foot, not my weird uh, left foot. Um, the correct bass drum foot. And you've got an option at this point, something that I like to do, um, and it's quite hard to hear on the recording. I don't think Dave actually plays a ghost note, but I like to. Um, so what you can do, if you're feeling a bit more advanced, um, there you can add in the note that's missed in beat one, the second note of the triplet, the trip if you like, one triplet, with the left hand as a ghost note on the snare drum. So you'd play something like this, one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. So the only quiet note there is the middle note of the triplet on beat one. And to play a ghost note, I like to keep it nice and low down here. You see all the other notes are up here. So with the bass drum, it just adds something to the groove. It sort of fills out the notes, makes it a bit more sexier in my opinion. But um, you can leave it out as, as Dave does, um, as I just previously showed you. So that's the first half of bar one. The second half of bar one is exactly the same. It just those six notes get played again. In bar two, the first two beats are exactly the same again. So those six notes are repeated once more, so three times in total so far. And then the last two beats of bar two of line one, 
we just get six notes played around the toms. Two on the snare drum, two on the high tom, two on the floor tom. And the bass drum is still playing the quarter notes, beats three and four underneath. So we get three triplet, four triplets. Three triplet, four triplets. Bass, 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 bass. So by the way, just a little, little bit of um, a, a tip for you. If you're finding that putting the bass drum in is really hard, or it's putting you off, then leave out the bass drum. Um, it's one of those things you can add to a groove or to an idea later on. It's like icing on a cake. You don't have to have it with icing if you don't want to. Um, it certainly adds a lot to the, to the feel, but if you're finding it too hard to play, because it's, it's, it's quite, quite a fast tempo anyway, then leave out the bass drum if you prefer. So let me now show you what the two bars sound like at a slightly slower tempo than actual tempo. One, two, three, four. Again. And up to speed. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four. One more time. Okay, so that's the first line. Onto the second line now, and this um, two bar pattern gets repeated at the um, every every four bars. So it, it, it's, the, um, it's the two bars of groove that occur in between each fancy drum fill, solo bit. Um, and they're really simple to play. You're playing quarter notes on the crash cymbal. One, two, three, four. It's still in triplets. And you're playing a shuffled bass drum pattern uh, on the bass drum on one and the last triplet note of beat one. So I count it one and two. And then the same for beat three, three and four. So you're playing bass drums one and two, three and four, and the snare drum's coming down with beat two and four at the same time as the crash cymbal. So one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. And you can just make that even simpler if you like. You could just play quarter notes um, just on beats one and three on the bass drum like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. But I, I, I like to play the shuffle pattern just as Dave does, especially when he plays it live. And the actual tempo. So here that it's swung. One and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. Not one and two, it's not this. Hideous. No, it's swung. It's triplets. Like that. Okay, let's now take a look at line two. Okay, I meant to say line three, of course, not line two. Uh, line three is actually a lot simpler than line one in the way. Well, in, in the only way, as in it is simpler. Uh, well, I certainly think so anyway. Um, and again, it's best to split up into two beats. Um, Per bar. So the first two beats of, of bar one, we've got six notes, um, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, one triplet, two triplets. The first note is played up on the crash cymbal with the bass drum, one, and by the way, you can use any crash cymbal at any point in this song. I have two crash cymbals set up here, and I alternate between the two depending on where I end up at the end of a drum fill or groove. It doesn't really matter what crash cymbal you use, I'll be using this one for this, for this particular bar. Um, so yeah, beat one is bass drum and crash cymbal, one, and then just continue the flow of triplets down on the snare drum. So treat the first crash cymbal as the first note of six triplet notes in a row. One triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. If I play all the notes on the snare drum, we get one triplet, two triplet. So that crash cymbal is, is, is I like to think of it as part of the flow of notes. It's da, 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 da. one triplet, two triplet, there's no break there. And the, the second two beats of bar one are exactly the same. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Onto bar two, and we have the first two beats exactly the same. One triplet, two triplet. And then the same as bar, um, line one, um, which explained previously, we have six notes um, split, played around the toms. Two on the snare, two on the high tom, two on the floor tom, and the first snare drum note is played with the bass drum. So it's the first note of the new six, we play with a bass drum again. So we get 
One triplet, two triplet, bass, bass, bass. Let me try the whole line, line three, at a reasonable tempo. One, two, three, four. Again. And up to speed. And again. Love it. Okay. And then line four, as I explained previously, is the same as line two. We've got that groove bar, two, two bars of groove in between. Okay, now let's look at line four. <laughs> I meant line five, of course. And we're on to the section that um, gets drummers excited. Um, drummers' ears prick up when they hear this section. Ooh, what was that? And it's a rather famous drum lick used by many great drummers. I won't give you a list because I'm sure I'll get picked up on the list and go, well, you missed out him, you missed out her, blah, blah, blah. Used by loads of drummers. It's called the Herta, the Herta drum rudiment. It's a hybrid rudiment. It's triplet based. And um, you think of it as three notes because it's in triplets, except the first note is doubled. So start off with, leave the bass drum out for now. Just gonna be playing, um, let's just play best way to do this. Um, I think the best way is just to dive in to show you. I'm, I'm sure it's not that complicated for you to understand. So I'm going to count one, two, three. Excuse me, I'm going to double the first note. One and two, three. You can hear the pulse of the three notes still evenly kept. One, two, three. One and two, three. One, two, three. One and two, three. And we're just going to play right, left, right, left. One and two, three. One and two, three. One and two, three. One and It's really important that you maintain the evenness of notes. Otherwise, if you play four notes evenly, it turns into something else, a triplet type idea, uh, a different kind of triplet. But we're playing eighth note triplets and it needs to sound one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three. What a weird sound. Not. That's cool as well, but that's something different. That's not what Dave plays. So with the bass drum underneath, and it just falls with the first of the fast notes. Now when I first tried to play this, it took me ages to get this up to speed. But um, with careful practice and maintaining a loose and um, comfortable posture, because um, you have to pace quite fast, your wrists have to really work. And it is all in the wrists, by the way. You notice my arms aren't doing this. It's all in the wrist. All down here, the small muscles. And of course, once you get it, not just for this drum solo, you can apply it all over the place. There's a great drummer called Mike Johnson who does free drum lessons as well as well as paid ones, and um, he does loads of videos on this lick, the Herta. So back to the solo itself. What Dave does is he splits up each beat between the snare drum and the high tom. So the first, let's call, let's call the, the, the first beat a Herta on its own. The first Herta is on the snare drum, second on the high tom. Snare drum, high tom, snare drum, high tom, snare drum, high tom. So it just alternates between the two, with the bass drum falling on the first fast note of each. So slowly you'd get this. And that's both bars, perhaps a little bit faster now. Uh, even faster. And up to speed. Again. Notice the concentration in the eyes and face. Ooh. Trying to squeeze those notes out, trying to stay relaxed at the same time as well. 
Right, and then the next two lines, as, as, it, as you already know by now, is two bars of groove. So let's look at line seven. Okay, so line seven is a bit of fun. Um, and it's, it's um, alternating crash cymbals. And we're playing eighth note triplets, basically on the snare drum, and we're hitting beats one, two, three, and four on the crash cymbals with the bass drum. And because they're triplets, the hands alternate right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So we end up having the hands, the crash cymbals, be hit with the right hand, then the left hand, then the right hand, then the left hand. So some drummers find this really hard. They find it difficult to hit a crash cymbal with a left hand. I certainly did when I first started. So to start off with, you want to get used to just being able to do stuff like this. Um, put it in a groove or something. And then applying it to the fill itself, what you can do to sort of get yourself up to scratch with this is take out the bass drum to start off with. So think of it as all notes on the snare drum, we're just hitting the first of each three on the crash cymbal. So no bass drum to start off with. It'd be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. By the way, if you haven't got two crash cymbals, you can use a crash cymbal on the right cymbal or a crash cymbal on open hi-hat. It doesn't matter what cymbals you use. Again, one triplet, two triplet, right, left, Left. My hands are going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Fine. Now we've got to try and add the bass drum in. So that left hand's probably going to throw you off a little bit. Let's take it nice and slow. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Right, left, right, left. Bass drum, bass drum, bass drum, bass drum. A bit faster. like most of these things in this drum fill, you can take out any of these lines and you've got yourself some really cool new drum fills to work on. So you could be playing in a shuffle. <laughs> and you could, you could be applying hurters and these, these sort of alternating cymbal crashes in all your triplet ideas. So uh, applying it back to the drum solo again, we just got this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. And then onto the very last line where, I'll tell you what, let me just play that line up to speed. One, two, three, four. Like that. Onto the very last line now. And we've got the first bar, which is just a bar of groove as we had previous. The last bar starts the same, beats one and two, one and two, beat three, crash and bass drum on three, and then we've got a really fast kind of roll on the floor tom, almost like a fuddle dump, but not quite. It's just two notes played on the floor tom, right, left, followed by a bass drum straight afterwards. So you've got to get good at playing like a bottom type triplet where you play right, left foot really quickly. Right, left foot, right, left foot. No, I'm not going to try and do that. So it's right left foot on the floor tom bass drum. And the first of the floor tom notes starts on the upbeat of the triplet on beat three. So the triplet of beat three. So beat three starts three triplet one, or four, sorry. Three triplet four. Three triplet four. Three triplet four. Three and four, 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 three and the and is doubled. Three and four, three and four, three and four. But you can also just use your ears. Make sure that bass drum falls on beat four and put those two floor tom notes as close to the bass drum just before it as possible. Again, if that bass drum lands on four, then you're in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. So that line sounds like this. One and two, I'll take it slowly. One and two, three and four. Now, 
now up to speed. Again. I, le well, I, I guess, I guess that, that, that can be quite tricky for some drummers. So that's one of those icing on the cake situations. That little fiddle dump isn't essential to the drum solo. You can just play do da da do da da do da da dum dum and just play a flam on four with the bass drum four. You don't have to do that. It's not essential to, you know, to play onto the song to be able to play that kind of, that lick in particular. So there you go, that's the entire solo from start to finish. Um, the first solo, there's a different drum solo in the, second, in the second drum solo that occurs later in the song. All the parts are pretty much exactly the same except for one bar. I didn't get time in this video to go over that, um, but I might do another video on that second drum solo at some point in the future. But I hope you found this one useful, I hope you find it fun. Like most of the solos that I do um, and most of the drum solos you hear in songs, you can take bits out of them and use them as cool new drum fills. So, even if you don't actually play along to the song, by studying this kind of stuff, you can, you can um, learn, um, learn all kinds of new stuff and new ideas and take stuff away from it. You can actually download the full drum chart for this song on my website. I'll put a link somewhere, either here or here on the, on the screen. And um, yeah, you can also download the full notation. I'll put a link for that from my website as well, just for this solo. So you can have the music in front of you as I explain this. It probably helps a little bit. So email me if you've got any problems or questions, write on my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, visit me on my website, email me, uh, carrier pigeon, uh, loads of ways of contacting me, so please do, and I'll see you next time.